Right lads uh, and ladies, we're back. The mill bro is glued up. Now I'm gonna drill. Now, when I drill a Stanley, I use a jig that I've made up out of this vise, three inch vise, with some bolts that go on. Now, I do that with a Stanley because all handles are normally round with a Stanley and they're very hard to do without it. Mill bros, even though it fits the frame, I never use it. I've never found a need. Uh, what I do, because all mill bros I do pretty much 99% of them is all tri scale, I level the liners up and it'll balance on there. And I'll keep messing around and messing around until I get it level. So I also don't clamp, which I wouldn't really advise that. But what I would advise people to do, I'd advise to clamp first, but to get levels, I always support under the forks. You get what I mean? So I'll check on the side angle, which is level. And then I'll support under the forks. Just to give that little bit extra. You get what I mean? Now, ideally you want a flat block. If you're gonna do it, if you're gonna do it without that jig, by the way, that jig's cheap to buy, you can do that yourself easy. But if you're gonna do it without, I get this is as crooked as fuck this is to be fair. I buy a flat one that comes slightly higher than your scales, so it sits on. Uh, I must have something around I can use as an example. Rough example, flat block, like that. Now clamp that onto there. Support the, the back underneath here, support underneath there, and that should give you a level playing field. But always clamp, don't, don't do what I do. I've done so many now, I'm confident with it, so. And even then, you never know. Right. We'll quickly do the first drill, which is four mil. I'll do it quickly because I don't want all these videos to run over 15 minutes outside the YouTube time. Now, I know this is all level. I'll find out where, it, where the gap is, which is there. Take it nice and slow, then pull back, let the dirt crap come out. Don't put too much force on the We're through. Now what I will also do, I'll put this on the bandsaw once I've drilled the holes and cut round carefully with the bandsaw to get it in shape, then I'll concentrate on gluing the other side. If you haven't got a bandsaw, you can get away with cutting these off with a Dremel and a disc, or if you've got the time, you can even get all that down with a sanding drum on a Dremel, so you don't need a bandsaw. I'm using a pillar drill. If you haven't got a pillar drill, I would recommend putting your head between your legs and kissing your ass goodbye because it's very very awkward but yeah I'm gonna crack on with this lads I hope that's been there uh, informative for you and the next time you see me is when both sides are drilled on and uh, leveled up and we'll start the shaping cheers lads right lads back again now the other side has been glued up and drilled I'm very happy with it one side has been shaped if you look First thing I'd do is like this one has been shaped in around the sides. I'd shape him around the sides with the Dremel, touching the edge of the core and getting it in bit by bit by bit, section by section. Keep your eye on it, make sure you're level until you're all the way round like that. Once you've got it round and you feel you're happy with the fit, then it's a matter of getting it level because obviously bone and buffalo worn on this is not always level, although it's pretty level getting the surfaces level, getting the angle which I want, what shape I want, then rounding the edges off to the right curve, or the curve that I, I feel I want on whatever particular frame. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shape this other side in, and then I'll be back to you with the pins. But yeah, all going well so far. I recommend when you're dremeling in with bone, wear a mask. I'm supposed to be wearing a mask, but I forget. Uh, there's a good chance I'm going to grow maybe some horns, a hump, 
antlers, I don't know. But uh, yeah lads, all going well. Cheers, and I'll see you soon. Right lads, back, all shaped up, as you can see. Now, another thing I'm going to say is I don't always shape up before I pin. On Stanley frames, I never do, in fact. I only ever do it on Milbros. Why, I don't know. I don't suppose it saves any time or makes any difference. I think originally it was because the first Milbro I'd done, I scaled in quite big material. So I found it a lot easier to shape it down without the pins and then having to shape metal pins down as well. And I've just stuck with it. But you could pin it first, then, then shape it in. Makes no odds. Right, for some reason, 6mm pins don't always go in 6mm holes. Same with 4mm. Now, all the pins I've done... I reshape down with a Dremel sanding drum. Lightly go across it like that until it shapes down. And I don't know whether you can pick it up. There's indentations I've also put on each of these pins with a Dremel to make them stick better when they're in. A little tip though when you're reshaping, reshape on the full bar like this one's done. That's been reshaped because you can hold it better. If you're holding a small pin, it's going to get very hot. You're going to hold the pliers. It's a nightmare. Right, I'll cut this last bit off. And we'll see how we go. And yes, lads, I should be wearing safety goggles when I do that, so make sure you do it. Uh, it's force a habit that I don't, and I have had a few come back and hit me around the eyes and face. Not draw blood, but they sting, so very silly mistake on my part not to use the glasses I've got on the table. Or the ventilation mask as well, but just make sure you do that, lads. I don't want you taking an eye out. Right, pins. I don't want to push them in too far yet, because I want to get them out. I, I like, when I reshape pins, I get them, try to get them as tight as I can, it doesn't always work, but... You always tend to find they go in one side better than the other because that's the side you've had to drill through, so it's sometimes a bigger hole. Right, that pin's a bit tight, but it will go in when the, when the glue's in. This bit of brass has also had to be reshaped. A little trademark of mine, the the alley lanyard with the brass inlay, and that will go in there. Now I'm going to glue these up. Give them a twist when you glue them in. Make sure the glue gets round. Stand it on its side, not like that. You don't want them running out or anything. And, uh, yeah, let them dry. I'll cut them off with a Dremel disc. And then shape them down with a sanding drum, little bit by little bit, as in not to cause too much damage. Some people use a file. Probably better to use a file. You'll keep a flatter surface. But I'm what you call a bit of a pro with a Dremel, so I can, I can get them down pretty well. So I'm going to go and glue these in, lads, and I'll come back to you with the reshaping of it. We're getting there, we're getting there. Just another quick one lads regarding the pins. I've got the glue ready to go now, I'm gonna glue them in. When you push a pin in, you're gonna get a lot of glue spurt out the side you're pushing in, but none the other side. Just dab some glue on the other side just to fill in uh, any gaps. Also, like I said to you, I reshape pins. I do. Certain pins I don't reshape. Uh, I work a lot with mosaic pins. Sometimes you get a mosaic pin that isn't in a uh, outer brass tube it's in a uh i don't know steel i don't know what you call it it's not stainless i don't suppose maybe it is stainless but it's a tougher metal to shape down now if that's the case i get the dremel and i've got some burrs carefully it's not for everyone but i actually put the burr in and i resize the hole all the way through that way you're not damaging the edge of the mosaic pin and uh it works quicker for me, providing the burrs sharp. If you're sanding down a mosaic pin that's stainless or metal on the outside, you will literally use 30 sanding drums and be there all day. I've done it. I find it easier to burr the holes through. So different methods depending on what pins you're using. Right, I'm going to get this glued up, lads. Cheers. Right, lads. All shaped up, pinned up. The pins I took down with a Dremel sanding drum. You've got to be very careful when you do it because you don't want to put dents in stuff, stuff like buffalo. But I'm so used to doing it now, I can do it. As I've advised in other videos, you might be better off to file it. I've sanded this whole frame over now with 180 grit. 
along the sides just up oh, no need to cross no more i hope no need to cross no more it looks like i've got pretty much every scratch out but you'll never know until you get to the high end grits upwards and crosswards on the face and then what i've done this is a nylon brush it was a lot bigger but it's worn down a lot but it works better when it's worn down i go along the edges of the catapult just to get any glue out that might be there and in the top bit there and stuff like that just just helps it along a bit now next step with this i will wash this over just to keep it clean because i like working with clean stuff and then i will go on with the process of sanding there's no good me doing more videos of me sanding because there's nothing really i can show you when it comes to sand i pretty much showed you how i sand it's just a matter of uh, getting stuck right in our sanding sections and and just going for it putting plenty of time and effort in I mean, it's one of them things, sanding, you can over sand something with ease, you know what I mean? A certain grit will only take you a certain distance, so it's knowing when to stop, but that comes with an experience. That'll have 400 grit next, then it will be washed over with a Brillo pad, then it will have 800 grit, 1000 grit, I believe, no, 800, 1200, 1500, then 2000 grit. The 2000 grit I'll put on wet. I'll also wash the catapult in between each grit. Again, I like to work with a clean catapult. 2000 will go on wet. The 3000 is a sponge. It's a gritted sponge, which I'll wash it in the sink, and then it will be polished. As I said, I'm not going to do no videos for sanding, but I will do a video on polishing and the final product finished. But yeah, that's been done today from scratch the only thing I've never done today is drill the core the rest of it's been prepped today and whatnot so yeah I've managed to get the lines nice and level as I said with these uh, especially cast frames there can be scratches in it that you just don't see and uh, you won't see them until you've literally got to 3000 grit or even started to polish it sometimes they're minimal sometimes they're big it depends how satisfied if I feel satisfied with a the frame then I'll carry on if I don't feel satisfied with it then I will take it back down in certain places to 800 grit 400 if necessary and keep going back up you know what I mean it's sanding and polishing can be obsessive and I don't think you'll ever get something that's completely scratch free as sandpaper will put scratches in so uh, yeah but I'm happy so far lads Cheers, thanks for watching.